70 pound bracket. We got Jay Rodriguez against Mika Galvao. Are you kidding me, Sean Williams? Uh, we got fireworks is what we're gonna have. And it is now time to bring out our 170 pound bracket. Out of the blue corner, training in Austin, Texas, representing B Team, Jay Rodriguez. Out of the red corner, training out of Jun GIE, Sao Paulo, Brazil, representing Escola, Milky Galvao, Mika Galvao. Mika Galvao is back on the Who's Number One stage. Originally from Manaus, Amazonas, Brazil, representing Team Melky Galvao Jiu-Jitsu. J-Rod recently with one of the craziest submission defenses ever in quintet. Um, you know, Mika Galvao has been, said he's been studying, you know, J-Rod a little bit. He's looking at the footage. So we'll see what kind of submission attempts Mika could look to go for. I think judging that comment, it would make more sense to look for him to go for the back, you know, go for rear naked chokes and stuff like that. Because it's going to be really, really challenging to submit J-Rod with an armbar. Be interesting to see, you know, how he performs Mika jumps to the close guard, looks for a leg of J-Rod, now uses the opportunity to get to the top position. That's what I mean right there. You know, it's a, that jumping attack in on the leg and then just took it back. J-Rod's going to want to do some little bumps to get that hand back in there. I blinked for a second, all of a sudden I see them jumping on each other. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cleared him out, stiff arm, and then we can try to fly and guillotine, essentially. Shot there by J-Rod. Oh, in on the arm tight. Beautiful arm bar attack by Mika Galvao. J-Rod twisting and turning, trying to escape. Mika Galvao has that arm, and look at the escapes by J-Rod over and over and over again. Take the back here. And he gets out, J. Rodriguez with the back escape. Wow. Oh, nice takedown by J-Rod. Sucked him right into the head now, though. He's got to be careful. That's a really strong position that Mika Galvan was known for. Oh. He's in that leg. That was a beautiful yeah. version. Let's we'll see if he can capitalize on this. Yeah. Man, J Rod looking so smooth, countering the takedown attempts of Mika Galvan. Nope. J Rod cleared him out nicely. J Rod with a little shoulder crunch attempt there. Mika gets to the feet now, J-Rod. Man, this, is, this has been a good match. Sean Williams, what a match. Mika with the counter gets to the top position. Seven seconds left. Jay Rod with a little push away with the foot here. All smiles, they shake hands. What a match. 
What a awesome. Match. That's right. Awesome. That was a fantastic and match. Just that the name decision doesn't justify what occurred here. So many submission attempts, yeah. beautiful wrestling attempts, beautiful counters, flying everywhere. <laughs> Mika Galvant does what Mika Galvant does. Beautiful job. School. That was a crazy match, Mika. I told you I would improve my wrestling at some point. <laughs> yeah, was that the plan? Did you want to showcase some, some wrestling this time? Yes, and who better than Jay Rath? I think right. the other guy has like some sick wrestling, and I think that no better test than that. And he worked. So I think that the training has proved to be good. And now we just gotta wait for the final. And on the final, we gotta showcase some more cheats. Let's go. Cool, I wanna ask you real quick about that, that arm bar where uh, you and Jay Rod were just, that was insane. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you something. I saw uh, Jay defending his arm many times like this. I was like, dude, I'm gonna be able to get his arm. And then he was so slick. Like, he was escaping, and then I was trying to find the elbow uh, angle there. Oh, bro. If you, to wear, you, if you wear like someone normal, I'm pretty sure I would have submitted. But then his arm was like stretching and slicking again, stretching, slicking again. Bro, <laughs> I really thought that I could submit, but it is what it is. And we were able to give such a good match, so it was worth. <laughs> and then you also, towards the end, you had that chest wrap throw, which was just like, what, what, what made you want to do that? <laughs> uh, nah, you know, I, I was training some Greco. Uh, okay, I'm gonna now showcase myself a little bit. So I'm, I, I won uh, second place in Brazilian Nationals in Brazil uh, for the Greco team. And I wanted to, you know, show what I learned. And then I went to spend a week with uh, a meet in Colorado, uh, doing some training at the training center. And then I got some hangs of like the takedowns, like the throws, using the headlocks and stuff. I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it. And then I was the end of the training, I was able to hit here at full grappling. And then I was like, oh, just sick. Tonight was good. Just one more, and then let's take this back home. Awesome match, Mika. <laughs> Thank you, my man. Training in San Diego, California, representing 10th Planet, P.J. Barge. And out of the red corner, training in Austin, Texas, Andrew Tackett. We popping a leash, ragging a ball and a talking is cheap. Can't entertain what I got from the streets. I'm a Russian, you stalling who guarding a beast. Top of the building, streaming Geronimo. Been on an honor roll, I saw the goal and I got me a lease. Isn't it odd? We're beating the odds. Part of my sweater, I pay for the culture, the image is better. Black on my skin is the same as the leather. My jacket, a letterman, doctor with teeth. I've been a veteran. Many men, many men, trying to wish death upon many men. Glory the dead isn't cheap. Hustle like Jimmy, can't run from their heat. Hey. Show me what you got, show me what you got. Show me what you got, show me what you got. Show me what you got, show me what you got. Hey, hey, show me what you got, show me what you got. I've been a man, I got the world in the palm of my hand. I've been a story, I cannot be sorry. I gave him the glory, it's all in the plans. Feel like a movie, the crowd in the stands. Clapping their hands, waving their hands, legs in a flurry. That's why you know I'm just not in a hurry, cause I've been a man. Give me the glory, give me the glory. Just the wind in their hands, give me the glory, give me the glory. That was just part of the plan. Give me the glory, give me the glory. Watch as they wave in their hands. Give me the glory, give me the glory. That was just part of the plan. Give me the glory. Run it up. Not with the fake, I'm a one-on-one. 
I'm gonna be great just to sum it up. Sum it up. I've been the one and no runner up. What? I'm sick of the profile. Lucky I've been about dope now. Still, I know it ain't everything so proud of the way I've been handling those trials. Might be the cosign. I'm a star in the globe. I need more shine. Running in sunny delight. Ease. Running like feeling like breeze. Betty be easing my Jeep. Who you know got a squeeze on the lead? Who you know rapping that's better than me? My love for the art. The races in Mario Kart. The shells make it deeper than me. Hey. Show me what you got. 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 I've been a man. I got the world in the palm of my hand. I've been a story. I cannot be sorry. I gave him the glory. It's all in the plans. Feel like I'm over the crowd in the stands. Clapping their hands. Waving their hands. Legs in a flurry. That's why they know I'm just not in a hurry. Cause I've been a man. Give me the glory. Give me the glory. Watch us the way that they the winner and will face Mika Galvao. Wow. Yeah, wow indeed. <laughs> Of course, you guys saw the match. It was crazy. Um, me and PJ threw down. You know, we were, we were both dogs. You know, wanna, we wanted to win really bad, so we were both throwing down. Um, and like, I think it was when he got the really clean um, takedown on me towards the end. Um, I felt like my back, not like slip, but slip, but I felt it like shift a little bit. Um, I've been struggling with like an L1 disc injury for about a year now. Um, and it's been like in and out for about a year, but never too bad. And I felt it slip a little bit during the match and when I would shoot on him, I just felt like a little pull on it every time I'd shoot towards the end. And as I was walking back here, I was like, man, my core's tightened up. Um, and then I like laid down right here for about five minutes and got up and I like couldn't move. And I like was like super stiff. And I had my brother's girlfriend, she's a um, massage therapist, and she was like loosening up my core and stuff. And then I stood up to test it and it instantly slipped. Um, so I uh, I didn't make the decision my team did, which thankfully you know I wasn't in the right mind space. They told me to drop out. I wanted to fight, um, but they, they they're telling me to drop out because um, my body's just not you know, in the right in the right state to compete. Um, so PJ is going to take my place, um, and he's more than prepared. He felt freaking you know like a dog out there. So. Um, I'm trying to play it smart, you know, I got trials and tournaments later this year, so I don't want to make whatever's wrong with my back, like, even worse against, you know, an amazing competitor like Mika, um, and I don't want to go out there at, not at my best against someone like Mika, um, I wish I could, because I know you guys want to see it, but at the end of the day, I have to think about what's best for Andrew, um, I think this is best for my future, because I'm only 20, um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now, sorry to everyone, um, I know Mika, and Jerry gonna put on an excellent performance. Um, yeah. Cool. All right, Paige, you wanna just give me your thoughts? How, how you feeling right now? What's happening? And, and what's going through your body right now? Um, yeah, it was a tough match with Andrew, physically, mentally, um, and uh, obviously he had a tough one too, and, and got hurt, you know. So um, Flo and the guys asked me if I could step in so that you know save the show, you know, and I had to collect myself and, you know, get over my feelings and uh, my physical feelings too and go out there and try to be a Mika now. So, how, you, how you feeling right now? We'll get there. I got about a match to get there, so we'll get there.
as I said, I think this is going to look beautiful in our school in some home. So whenever you want to see this bell, please visit us in June Day. Right? You got two of them now. Yeah, we got two of them now. You see? Wow. Yeah, you. So, hey guys, come visit us in Sao Paulo. Come train with us. I think that uh, our school is free, free there. We have a very good church structure. And we would love to have you all there. So, come visit us. <laughs> So we are at Six Lays Lake Travis, my school. We've been here for two years almost, and I always like to implement some of my training here. You know, as I said, it's a good option for me to slow down, you know, the pace and see where the gaps are and just be a student. You know, I think I, I love this part of the journey of just being a student and being a jiu-jitsu athlete kind of like allows you to do that. In order to get to the top, you have to beat everyone uh, that is on your way. So I'll be facing Nick Rod, on who is number one in Costa Mesa. Fighting a guy like him would just be good for me, you know, like to display my jiu-jitsu and, you know, reach out to more and more people to see my work. If I'm staying with like my frames here and controlling, as soon as I try to free this leg to recover, it's really easy for Philippe to stop me and just kind of back out, step over. Okay, and then you're back to that same position. So if you want to recover your guard, you're going to have to control this arm, but now I'm going to use this arm to come over his head. So I'm controlling this position. So I still have my shield right here, so it makes it difficult. As he starts to put pressure, I keep controlling this hand. I can move my head away a little bit, step on the hip. We're working through a specific curriculum all the time with our students. So it's just, it was kind of cool that it happened to be half guard this week. It's probably a position he's going to be in a lot. Victor's training, I think with most of our training partners, it's always like scrambling and pressuring and like nonstop going back and forth. And I think this is, you know, being more aware of like the positions that you're in and what are bad positions and how to kind of push a pace without exposing yourself. So how do you control the distance, keep it on your terms, and you're able to stay sticky enough to like go into the deep waters of jiu-jitsu, which Victor really thrives in. Even though I faced Nick before, right now he's in a different moment. Yeah, this is a good position here for Rodriguez. His brand grew so much since last time he fought. He had a really good match with Pugisa. He's way more confident on his jiu-jitsu. He, he's going forward, you know, he's not like shining back. Seeing that match and seeing his last match, he made me even more fired up to fight him because, oh, that guy is actually trying to do jiu-jitsu. He's putting the pace forward, and that's what I expect for our fight. I think there's a lot of areas that I'm, I'm better at because I'm, I believe I'm a more versatile grappler, you know, like, as I said, I do certain things, but I don't rely on those things only on those things to win, you know? I can kind of like um, succeed in different areas, and I think that's going to be my path to the win against him. And it looks like he's about to take the back and get the score on Big Dan. The, the points are on the board, the time expired, Victor Hugo is moving on to the next round. I think a lot of people like, almost like sleep on me because I show up, I win, and then I go home. But if you look at my records, I'm literally fighting the toughest guys, and most, a lot of times submitting them. Yeah. It's always like exciting just seeing like the crazy things that he comes up with or you know someone that big that can move that fast. Fortunately for me we have enough big guys now. I don't have to kind of go in there and train with him that often. It's incredible to watch. Right? So when he starts putting the things together and he starts opening up his game, I think you're gonna see a really dangerous victor this year. Not only is he incredibly agile, and he moves so well on his back and is able to do some really amazing things, but uh, he's really strong. And I know this because I train with him, you know, almost every day. He's like a big, strong gorilla. He's strong in the weight room, but in the mat, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's frightening. I know he will go out there and do what Victor Hugo does, which he's, his guard's extremely difficult to pass. He doesn't give up. He's in great shape, and uh, he's done all the things he needs to do in my book. Uh, now it's just going to have to come out and do the fight. One of the mistakes that I've done before is to push myself too hard when it's this close. So right now I think is the best time for me to work on the tails, you know, 
kind of like piece up specific parts of the match that could eventually happen or are most likely to happen and fix those things. I could say a lot of people would be, you know, like kind of happy just getting wins, like winning here and there, like beating big names by decision. But for me, it doesn't feel like you haven't completed the mission if you haven't got the tap, you know? And that's the feeling that I have since I faced him the past two times. I've been able to fill up those gaps that I had back then. And he's just going to be a perfect opponent for me to show, you know, in this play, the technique that I've been working on. I mean, you see Victor, he wins from everywhere. You'll see Victor enter the legs. You'll see Victor play classic jujitsu. You'll see him doing some wrestling now. You'll see him playing the open guard. Like, you'll see him on top putting a lot of pressure, right? You know, it's going to be different. I think it's going to be an exciting, explosive matchup. I think they're both, like, kind of at their peak right now. And, uh, you know, the good thing is, like, they want to get it out there and mix it up. Thank you guys so much. Big challenge for Victor coming up, so. Thank you guys so much for supporting him. Thank you guys. Yeah, that's the part that matters the most to me. The preparation, have you guys uh, doing this training together means a lot. The energy, everything, your time. And yeah, love it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you guys. Let's go. All right, cool. Even though I'm training to beat him, that's not the only thing I'm training for. My main goal for this year is August. Each challenge, you know, will make me better. I'll do way to ADCC, and that's how I see this. You know, it's, it's the beginning. You know, it's the beginning of my 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 my, my run to ADCC, and yeah, it's gonna be a, a, a great a great fight, a great opponent, and a great a, a great opportunity for me. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to beautiful Costa Mesa, California for the 22nd iteration of Who's Number One. The fans are lining up and the energy is absolutely electric as we draw closer to tonight's show live from the hangar and on flow grappling. This is Who's Number 122, Rodriguez versus Hugo. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jake Watson, joined of course by Kendall Rusing and the legendary Andre Galvão here for who's number 122, Marigali, or my apologies, Hugo versus Nick Rodriguez. Andre Galvão, I'm gonna ask you first, what do you think of this amazing event? Man, it's gonna be great fights. Uh, I can't wait to see and to watch all the fights, all the matches. Uh, Vitor Hugo and Nick Rod is a fight that I wanna watch and definitely they, they're, they're in the highest of their performance right now. Uh, Nick Rod has incredible jiu-jitsu nowadays. Back then, uh, he was just a wrestler that used to compete in the grappling world. And now I can tell like he's uh, incredible uh, on top, on bottom, passing, um, body locks. Uh, Vitor Hugo, on the other side, he's like incredible on the terms of the technique aspect, the basic techniques, but also he improves so much in the physicality. So he's physical, it's amazing. So I can't wait to watch that match. Kendall, thanks so much for joining us once again on the pre-show. What do you think about this entire event? Always happy to be at Who's Number One, but especially here in Costa Mesa, California at a beautiful event such as The Hangar. And we've got a big hometown crowd here. We've got a lot of athlete favorites in the house. And man, this is an interesting card because almost every match on the main card could be its own event, right? Event of the night. And then we look at the undercard and we've got some new rising stars we haven't seen before, but also some names that are already pretty household in the jiu-jitsu community. So man, this event is gonna be electric. I can't wait to get started. All right, so let's take a look at the main card that we have tonight. Victor Hugo and Nick Rodriguez, of course, headlining. Mika Gonvão versus Kenta Iwamoto. Uh, Dante Leon versus Diego Pato. Tynan Dalpra versus Oliver Taza. Amanda Alakin versus Adele Fornarino. And Sebastian Rodriguez will take on Elijah Dorsey. So for tonight's main event, an amazing matchup, as you had talked about a little bit before, Andre, but I'll turn to you, Kendall. Specifically, with Nick Rodriguez versus Victor Hugo, how do you see that match playing out? 
Man, this is one of my favorite matches on the card. Of course, it's our main event, but we have two monsters in this match. I don't know if they're gonna be able to contain it in this match space the entire time, because you have Nikki Rodriguez, who is extremely powerful, super explosive, but also, man, once he gets to a strong position, he does not let it go. Then you have Victor Hugo, the mountain, okay, BMF. We've got this guy who, if he gets someone into his close guard, he mounts, he takes someone's back, it is very, very unlikely that they are going to escape, let alone advance in the match. So I think when you have two titans like this who are both on a huge win streak, a huge hot streak, coming off recent big wins, it's going to be something that you don't want to blink when you're watching this fight. And to your point, Victor Hugo has statistically a little bit of a better record versus Nick Rodriguez, whereas Nick Rodriguez recently has had incredible success in the tournament scene, Andre. Yes, definitely. Uh, Nick Rod, like, he improved so much, like I say, you know, like, Especially when he fought, when he fought against uh, uh, Felipe Pena, I could see like he improved so much in jiu-jitsu, and definitely it's going to be a great match. So, in our co-main event, stepping up to a big challenge is Kenta Iwamoto taking on Mika Galvão for the welterweight championship. That's going to be another amazing match. I'm very excited for that one, Andre. Yes, definitely. Uh, Mika, you know, is always unpredictable. You know, uh, he comes with a. Uh, Great submissions. He has a high submission rate. He comes for the submission. I believe like he has an advantage in the, this fight because he's a little bit taller than his opponent, and he has incredible headlocks. And on the other side, Kenta always try to go for uh, double legs and single legs with the knees on the floor. That can kind of like give advantage for Mika. We talked a little bit in the pre-show rehearsal, Kendall, about the importance of wrestling, perhaps, in this match. I want to hear more about your thoughts on that and about this matchup as a whole. Yeah, I mean, if you're watching the highlights here, you're going to see some wrestling, right? Kenta is really fun to watch because some of his matches with the highest level competitors in the sport, he wins scrambles, right? He takes people down. He takes the back. He advances on front headlocks. But then, of course, when you're comparing it to someone like Mika, how can you not say he thrives there, too? you got to be careful if you're Kenta because, yes, you do want to get to the takedown and you want to get to the top position, but I think his best bet is going to be looking for a back off of one of those scrambles because if he lands in Mika's guard, he's going to be in trouble. We know Mika is so dangerous from his back, so even if he loses a scramble, he's still going to be dangerous. So I think it's going to come down to the wrestling finishes there, but finishing in a dominant position rather than just a scramble. One thing that I can see in this matchup as well is we're kind of seeing in the main event and the co-main event sort of this dynamic between a really strong wrestling base and a more traditional jiu-jitsu base, whereas I will say Mika Galvão, very uh, impressive wrestling showcase in his last match as well. Mm -hmm. So overall, just a very exciting matchup there. That's for the welterweight championship. Now, in the next match that I think is one of the most exciting matches on the card, Dante Leon takes on Diego Pato. Diego Pato seeking double champ status here versus Dante Leon. Andre Galvão, give me your thoughts on this match. Man, Pato, definitely, uh, he has incredible jiu-jitsu, great strategy. He showed that his no-gi jiu-jitsu improved so much lately. Uh, he has incredible pass where he body locks the opponent in the other way around. It's like a inverted body lock pass. And, you know, I can't wait to see this match because Dante Leon is so strong. He's definitely one of the strongest guys in the weight division, and this is his division. So Pato is kind of like challenging the champion, so I want to see that, definitely. And speaking of that strength, I mean, Dante Leon, he's even had matches recently versus as heavy as Devonte Johnson winning that match. And the 155-pound champion, I mean, that's just absolutely <laughs> incredible, Kendall. So speak a little bit more to that. Yeah, we were talking a little bit yesterday in my interview with him, and we were referring to, I asked him, you know, is there a difference when you're fighting in the open class with guys like that versus fighting for the 155 pound championship belt, right? And defending that belt. One, he said it was a big deal to him that he was defending this belt because he said multiple people before have had this belt and didn't have the chance to defend it for whatever reason, so he wanted to stake his claim in the division. But then going into the difference between heavyweight versus 155, he was saying that he's oftentimes not taller than his opponents, right? So Pato is a really unique challenge for him, where he may have access to the head a little bit more than he does on the legs, which is normally where we see him. We see him wrestling into the leg positions. So he was saying, you know, I might be able to counter wrestle, I can counter to the back, to the head, but Dante believes he's gonna be in the top position on this fight, but I think, with the advantage Pato has of being a little bit lower down in the position, he could also get in on the legs and surprise Dante a little bit. So very excited about those two matchups, those uh, following our main event. 
the two title matches of the night, but one final matchup we want to go over is Costa Mesa's very own Titan Dalbra taking on Oliver Taza tonight, the king of Costa Mesa, Kendall. Now, Jake decided to steal my name, the king of Costa Mesa, because I thought it was so fitting. We've got everyone in the crowd tonight here cheering him on. Tynan is so interesting in this fight because he had his first match against Troy Russell. He came in, made his debut at the black belt level in Nogi after being so dominant in the Gi, of course. And now he's up, a very, up against a very unique challenge in Oliver Taza, who's a mainstay on who's number one, right? So it's a different style, different challenge. But my favorite thing about yesterday's interview in the press conference was when Tynan said he's looking to climb the ranks in Nogi as quickly as possible. In the Gi, he was more content with taking his time, slowly building up his resume and now he's like man I want to win as many matches as possible I want all the best guys give them to me and he's gonna have a tough test tonight in Oliver Taza yeah it's amazing that you said that because I mean Oliver Taza really no slouch and I wouldn't even say that elite competitor going against Tynan Dalbra too so definitely a very interesting match I want to hear your thoughts on that one too. Uh, right now it's time for Tyna to show that he's a no-gi grappler right so he's gonna fight a full-time grappler uh, Taina is doing great in the Gi uh, world, right? But now it's time for him to show that he's a no-gi grappler against a no-gi high-level uh, contender. And someone who's super tenacious, right? I think that's, like, Tynan isn't always able to be with people who don't stop fighting no matter what. And I think we could see a little bit of Taza shine in that realm. Absolutely. Maybe the match will even go off the mat. Who knows? It's happening a lot in the Nogi scene nowadays. But that's some of the main card matchups we wanted to go over. Now let's tee up that undercard. Tonight's prelims free on YouTube. Ivan Herrera takes on Elijah Dorsey. Max Hansen will go against Daniel Sadler. Ashley Funegra will go against Marilyn Cruz. And Kyle Chambers versus Dory Allen is the matchup that will open us up once again free on YouTube. And now we want to toss to Mr. Ricardo Amendolia with Flow Grappling for an interview with Richie Boogeyman Martinez. Ricardo? What's up, guys? We're back here backstage with Richie Boogeyman Martinez, 10th Planet legend. Boogie, tell me, who's number one back in Southern California, your backyard? What's it like being here at Who's Number One? Man, to be honest, it's always awesome to have um, big events like this in Southern California. Who's Number One is one of the best events I've ever been to, so I'm really happy that you guys are back here in um, Southern California. And, uh, you know, we got Kyle Chambers, kind of one of the next generation of the 10th Planet of Freaks. He's got a really tough opponent with uh, Dari Owen. Uh, what is your thoughts on that matchup? What are kind of the things that the fans should expect from Kyle Chambers in this match? You know, it's one of those matches that's going to be exciting from beginning to end. You know, but um, fr from Kyle Chambers, you need to expect he's going to go for the finish. That's his main priority, going for the finish. He wants to make a statement that he belongs here, and I feel that he's going to prove it tonight. And we talk about the 10th Planet team. We got guys like PJ, Par uh, PJ Barch. We got Kyle Chambers. Anyone else on the up and coming that we should be uh, looking out for? Yeah, of course. You always have Keith Kikorian that's making moves. You have Alex Grandy. Um, he he's one of my up and coming brown belts. And we also have um, Matt Cox. He's one of my black belts that's up and coming. We have a lot of guys in the 10th Planet system that are coming up. Maybe not necessarily black belt level, but they're brown belt and they're ready to make that, that next move to make big moves in the jiu-jitsu scene. All right, good stuff. So who's number 122? Obviously, we want to talk about Kyle like we did, but any other matches that kind of stand out on the card or, you know, just give us your thoughts on the cards tonight. You know, I think this card is going to be exciting from beginning to end. You, you have Mika Gabao that's going to go against Kenta, but honestly, Mika Gabao is next level. Everybody sees it. Everybody knows it. And I feel that, that man, guy's unstoppable at this moment. So I'm very excited to see what he's able to do tonight. He's always, he always puts on the show, and I feel that tonight's going to be exactly that as well, you know? All right, and the main event, Victor Hugo, Nicky Rod, Battle of the Big Boys. Yeah. Give us your thoughts on that match. How do you see that playing out here tonight? You know, I really like both of the guys. You know, both of them have been been growing tremendously in, in skill level, and they're also learning how to compete even better than they have before. I feel it's going to be a very exciting match. I think Bu uh, um, Victor Hugo has a couple uh, has a win over yep. oh, yes, but I, I feel tonight it's going to be exciting. You know, I, it's honestly going to be unpredictable, and I'm very excited to see what they're able to do and how much growth they've done in the past couple of months. All right, guys, you heard, it here. you heard it here backstage from Boogie. We're going to have an exciting match, main event, top to bottom, stack card. Back to you guys. All right, Ricardo, thank you so much. So turning your attention to the top right of the screen, you will see who's number one, 22. Hashtag WNO22. If you share that, 
and you repost that on whatever social media you use. There's so many different social medias. Please share your viewing experience with us. We want to see that you guys are watching at your watch parties or however you're seeing who's number one. We love to see fan engagement. And now, finally, one final re uh, reminder. If you're watching the prelims, you're watching them free on YouTube, but if you want to catch the main card, go to flowgrappling.com slash sign up and get a Flow Grappling membership and you will be able to see the main card as well as all the information, news, updates, and media surrounding who's number one. Now, without further ado, thank you so much, Andre Gonvao and Kendall Rusing. And once again, I'm Jake Watson. Let's get to who's number one. Live from the hangar at the OC Fairgrounds in beautiful Costa Mesa, California, it's who's number 122, Rodriguez versus Hugo. What's up, guys? This is Ricardo Amendolia here with Mr. Sean Williams himself, back for another exciting who's number one card from top to bottom. This is going to be an awesome night of action. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, matchmaking, the WNO matchmaking is just bar none, one of the best in this in the game, and this card is no different from start to finish. It's gonna be crazy. All right, let's take a look at some of the matchups for tonight. Rundown of today tonight's main card. First match will be Sebastian Rodriguez, actually against uh, Jacob Couch, not Elijah Dorsey. Elijah will be in the undercard. Then we're gonna go to Amanda Aliquin versus Adele Fornarino. Tynan Dalpra, Costa Mesa zone against Oliver Taza. Dante Leon versus Diego Pato. Mika Galvao versus Kenta Iwamoto. And the main event, Victor Hugo versus Nick Rodriguez. Now let's take a look at the prelims. This will be free on YouTube and social media on Flow Grappling. Uh, Kyle Chambers is gonna kick things off against Dory Aoun. Then we'll go to Ashley Funegra versus Marilyn Cruz. Max Hansen and Daniel Sattler and Ivan Herrera versus Elijah Dorsey will be the final prelims match for tonight. All right, some of the things that make who's number one very unique 
uh, amongst having the best grapplers in the world is the Who's Number One rule set. We're going to pass things over to Reed Donald from Flow Grappling to explain the unique rules that makes Who's Number One special. Welcome to Who's Number One, the premier proving ground for the world's best grapplers. And now right here on this very stage, two grapplers will enter and only one will leave victorious. All matches are 15 minutes in length, except where otherwise noted, with no points, no advantages, and no interruptions. Just elite, competitive grappling. There are two ways to win. The first is, of course, the most preferred, by submission. And here at Who's Number One, all submissions are legal. Heel hooks, arm bars, twisters, and beyond, the world's best have all the tools at their disposal. And if at any point either competitor taps, the match is over. But if there isn't a submission, we will rely on three neutral side judges to determine a winner. Their decision will be based on our who's number one judging criteria, which is unique to this match. Now above all, we are looking for aggression. That means never taking a backward step and moving forward at all costs. We're looking for dangerous submission attacks. That means attempts that will result in a near submission, okay? Leave your 50-50 ankle locks at home. We don't need them. And if it doesn't result in a reaction or a hyperextension, they simply won't count. And finally, positional control. That means guard passes, mount, back takes, anything that leads to positional dominance. The match will be judged in its entirety, and the person with the better display of effective Grappling skill will get their hand raised. The referee is also neutral and does not take part in the judge's decisions. His role is purely to control the action on the mats and reset the action should it go out of bounds. This is elite grappling competition at its purest form. A showcase for the world's best grapplers on the world's biggest stage. Just the best fighting the best. It's the only way to truly find out who's number one. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to WNO 22, Rodriguez versus Hugo. On behalf of everyone here at Flow Sports, it is a pleasure to be back here in one of the great grappling towns in the world, Costa Mesa, here in Orange County, California. We have 10 big fights, two title fights, and yes, our heavyweight main event. Tonight, we find out who's number one. Let us get to our first fight of the evening. It is in the middleweight division. Fighting out of the blue corner, training out of Long Beach, California, with Team Checkmat, Dory Aoun. Dory, Dory Aoun, big crowd here for this young man, making his Who's Number One debut. Fighting out of Santa Ana, California, representing Hustle BJJ and Team Checkmat. Yeah, he brought a, he brought a, a crowd for sure. His opponent, out of the red corner, training out of Oceanside, California, with 10th Planet, Kyle Chambers. Kyle Chambers, the 10th Planet freak, makes his return to the Who's Number One stage. Fought, he was actually a contestant of Who's Next, the reality show, ended up in that three-hour war with Isaac Michelle. Hopefully we don't see it go that long today. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at tonight's tale of the tape, middleweight matchup. Dario Oud, 29 years old, six foot, weighted at 186 pounds. Kyle Chambers, 31 years old, six foot three, weighed in at 183.2 pounds. This will be a nine minute match on the undercard. 
We're going to kick things over to the referee, Gabriel, to get the action going. All right, here we go. Dari Aoun representing Checkmat. Cal Chambers representing 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to be any mystery about it. Kyle. I think he'll just go to try to suck right under on the legs. Yeah. Create some, there he goes. He'll probably scoop the leg with the right hand. And Ayun's going to want to keep, he's trying to keep separation with his head. Or that left stiff arm, he could do that as well. And then move away. Slicing through, so. Doria with Lucas Leitch in his corner. Spending a lot of time training with the half guard master. So when Kyle Chambers pulls half guard, Dory knows what's up. Yeah, Lucas Leach is just so good everywhere, but that's it's sort of where he made his competition career based out of that. So this is going to be no, gonna, shouldn't feel too different than what, what he's used to in the half guard position there. But I, I would expect uh, Kyle to start to really try to scoop the leg or get a 2 1 1, create some off balance, and, and then get him to play. Cal Chambers, as we mentioned, was a contestant on the Who's Next reality show uh, back it was about a year or two ago. Was in the fighter house, got to the finals, had that battle with Isaac Michelle, and uh, making his returns. He's got experience at Who's Number One, but this is nine minutes. This is not gonna be a three hour battle. This is not a 15 minute match. This is a nine minute match. Kyle Chambers is a very dangerous grappler, very good at escapes if we've learned anything from the Who's Next finale. Yeah, so I'm trying to get on the sort of leg weave past that knee shield, and you can see him, he's, he's working the knee through there. That left side, you gotta be watch that left side as I, for, he's trying to flip over. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's in there, got underneath there well. That was a nice little inversion to the back yeah. take by Kyle Chambers. You know, the thing when you're running around is ivan has got to be careful where his feet go when he's bullfighting around there, for, especially for someone who likes to invert. If he steps too close to the hip with that, with either leg, it's going to be an easy inversion and at least a leg entry. Look at the flexibility of Kyle Chambers inverting there. He's looking very comfortable. Just kind of, you know, doing a good job of recovering just shutting down all of uh, Dory's pass attempts there. It is stack pass attempt by Dory. He's got a, yeah, he's got that single arm in. Yeah, he's got a padlock, we call this, and he could shake the arm in and get a triangle he's, or switch to Kimura. You should lock the triangle here with the hand in. There's the leg attack off the upper body. He's in on this leg. Let's see if he can spin and open up his knee now. He's got a... He's, Rare. Yeah, now he's got a leg entanglement here at the knees in, so if he separates the feet. Almost out, almost out. And this is exactly what we want to see here at Who's Number One. Leg lock shootout submission battles. Kyle Chambers transitioning from the attacking the upper body to the lower body right away. I think we're going to remove the earrings of Kyle yeah. Chambers. Yeah, just a wardrobe malfunction, yes, more or less. Uh, safety you know? hazards. Yes, trying to but yeah. And it sucks because that was a good pace. Yeah, yeah, it's a good it's, it's a good, good movement set yes. guy, these guys got in on. Ayun did a good job of staying composed and, and freeing his knee and not getting his leg sucked back in there. You, could, you know, I could see that Kyle grabbed above the knee to try to get that leg pulled back in, but unsuccessful and yeah I, I gotta say I'm, I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Kyle Chambers here today. Yeah. Uh, some beautiful submission attacks chaining submission to submission this is exactly what we want to see here at who's number one Kyle Chambers is bringing it Dario on the top trying to get the guard pass it's a half guard now, Ayun kind of pulled out back there. He, he was in and kind of pulled himself out. Now he's got to pull out. I mean, now to, to drive in here isn't going to help. You, 
put your hands down, get your inside ties. He's able to pummel his arms back inside, so that's good for him. But you'll see close guard is such an easy leg entry, um, or can be, for Chambers. Um, that would mean that I only would be, need to be ready to kick out of this if he's going to stand up and chooses to elect to open the guard on the knees. Dory trying to circle out. Lock the, lock the fingers there a little bit. Nice little flying knee cut past the attempt there by Dory. Now he needs to just keep creeping above the leg, the knee line. He needs to get above the knees or just hug, body lock or hug in. That would be a good position. He tried, but he got put back in the close guard. And, Man, look at the, the, the dexterity and flexibility of Kyle Chambers. Going to a go go Plata attempt there, it looks like. Yeah, you need to come out of there instead of into there when that guard starts getting up high. You gotta push the head, you gotta push that foot down, and he can still bring his head out. And then limp the right arm, elbow up into the midsection. But uh, he's, he sort of dro drove himself into this position, which isn't ideal. It's time to leave now if you're Ayun. There's plenty of room to leave if he does it now, but driving in cannot, can oftentimes lead to some trouble here. If Kyle Chambers throws that right leg over the top of this arm that's in there. I was, I was just going to say, what does Kyle need to do to kind of seal the deal here? Yeah, he could, it feels like he's, he's in the right position, but does he have the wrong angle? Could, what, what can he do with this yeah, right leg? He can throw the right leg around. Now you can see he's trying it, but th there was some space there, because then you're going to have at least a triangle. You're going to have a go -go, a tighter go-go plata and a triangle. There, he's trying to do it now, is to get that right leg around the arm, but he's going to wait too long. If he waits too long, then I, then Ayun could leave. He, could, he should stand up right now, put his hips up high, turn his thumbs down, and literally just duck his head and walk out of this. Judges favor, red. There, he's getting out. There, that Chambers waited too long there, and Ayun was able to slip the right elbow. He's got to do something different here. He's got to mix up his strategy because Kyle Chambers is is winning in the judges' yeah. in the judges' favor. But I think also in the in everyone's impression right now, Dari really needs to start scoring here. Even though there's no scoring, he needs to get positions. He needs to attack submissions. Kyle Chambers just accepting every pass Dory has and changing that into a submission attempt. Yeah, they were saw that padlock counter to the double unders again. I like the leg weave, he's just got to get tighter. He's got to either use the like sort of an under near side underhook or a head and arm half guard pass. He's got to get tighter. He's he's getting around the horn or he's got to get the front head lock is, is I mean, like a front head arm. He's, Chambers is just easily inverting. There he's, now he's got around the guard. See if he can use that right arm. Nope, couldn't maintain it. Almost passed. Kyle using that flexibility and leg length to recover. Yeah, he's passed. He's going to pass now. Sorry, he's passed now. And boy, that, I think that's the tenacity right there, just continuing to pass and pass and pass. Let's see if he can get something going on, though, here. Taking the back left arm over on the other side, maybe looking for a back take with a top spin. And he's going to try to flatten him out with it go for a darts choke here. Kyle doing a good job of escaping. Dari on the attack once again, and Kyle recovers guard. I don't know if you guys at home can feel the energy of this arena, but it's popping off here in Costa Mesa. It is. I, I like the energy that Ayun is putting into this stuff. He's really just tenaciously moving past. Now he's got a back head and arm. Let's see if he can either flip Chambers over to the back or sneak a strangle in. He's got lots of opportunity. Yeah. But he's got to start attacking from that position. Oh, he's looking to take the back. Is Dorion. He's got one hook in. It's a good attacking position. He's got the hands. And Kyle Chambers escapes. He's got to watch that leg getting yanked in the inside. Now he's got to put weight into the left foot. Does Ayun. Got to put weight into that left leg, keep a strong hook, and he'll be just fine. He could actually get, shoot, get an underhook, but he couldn't keep weight into that foot. Kyle's got 30 seconds, got the knee, but looks like it was a little shallow for that knee bar. Yeah. Yeah, now I am. Dory attacking with the toe hold. 
It's not a bad toe hole. He's just got to bring the elbows into the chest. It's a hard to, that's a hard one to submit. They, they both kind of got their legs isolated. Put some. Now he's in a slicer here, as I heard. Two seconds left, and that is it. What a match to kick things off here at Who's Number 122. Fantastic performance by both of these young men. This is going to be a tight one for the judges. It uh, is. Yeah, I, I, I got to say at the end there, I even really kicked it up yeah, another gear. Definitely did. Yeah, yeah that's going to be a close one. Kyle Chambers going into the corner. The 10 Planet Freaks in full effect here. Let's take a look at the replay. Dari coming in. A little bit of a slow start. Kyle Chambers was on the attack. Had some vicious leg lock attempts early on in the match. Used that Gogo -Go Plata attempt as well. I feel like Kyle had way more submission attempts. Yeah. I, I think that Dari had two strong attacks, but I feel like Kyle did a little bit more with the submissions. Yeah, I, I think he had a, a, some nice submission attempts there, and then, and then I think like the last three minutes essentially really was, until this little thing right here was, was all Dory Ayun there, that pressure and the pace, but then maybe it's a little too late. Well, too little, too, too late, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't think we're alone on this one. The judges are still uh, discussing this. I'm trying to figure this one out. Yeah. This is when it's not fun to be a judge. <laughs> it's so close. All right, we're going to kick things over to the judge's decision now. Out of the blue corner, Dory Aoun. Dory Aoun wins the decision. That was tight. That was tight. Very yeah. close. Yeah. I, I guess the positional dominance that he had for a short period of time, plus a couple of his Dars attacks, uh, that was tight. That, that was, was tight. I don't know about that one. I got it. But you know what? Let's hear from Dory. Let's kick it over to Kendall for a word with our winner. All right, Dory, what a way to open up our evening here. How does it feel to start who's number one off with such a bang? Thank you for having me, guys. I'm blessed to be here. I wanted to, I was happy I was first fight to try to bring the energy and get the crowd involved. Love you guys. Thanks everyone for being here. All my family and friends are here. It means the world to me, but um, I'm blessed to be interviewed by you. Thank you very much. Now, Dory, I got to ask you, there was a turning point in this match, right? There was a big moment where you were behind on the judges' scorecard, and you were right over here, and you started working your way into those passes and the back takes. Talk about what was going on for you mentally and emotionally in those moments. That's a little of my game, man. I, I stay in it. I don't get tired. So last three, four minutes, that's my time. I'm going to give everything and try to come out on top. Shout out to my coaches. Russell Cantorna and Lucas Lace for saying, hey, it's time, let's go. You wanna take your opportunity to shoot your shot here? Is there anybody you're looking to come and have a match with on who's number one? Um, you know what, I was talking to my coach before the match, I said, today it's me versus me. I'm not even worried about the opponent. Kyle Chambers, thank you for the match. I'm not better than Kyle Ch Chambers. I'm better than I was yesterday, and I'm better than I was six years ago when I started jiu-jitsu. I, uh, I was lost, I didn't know what I was doing, getting in trouble, acting stupid. And now, six years later, jiu-jitsu helped me become a better person every day. So I just wanna say, um, there's doubts every day. Push through it, guys. And I ain't shit. I hope in six years I look back at this day and say, I'm better than I was that night. Let's hear one more time for our first champion of the evening. Congratulations. 
Who's number one, 22, is presented by Defense Soap. Now the official soap and body wipe of Flow Grappling, protecting you for over 15 years. Defend what you have built. All right, our next match will be a women's strawweight match. Ashley Funegra will be taking on Marilyn Cruz. AOJ versus Barrett submissions here at Who's Number One 22. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. This is Jack, if you have any. We're on a hold. Max in house, if you can.
Globe Rapid loves to come here, one of the best markets we are visiting. I hope you enjoyed that first fight. We have three additional preliminary fights. Text your friend that they can see these fights for free on YouTube. We'll move to the main card, and then three big fights to end the night. The heavyweight main event, and then the two fights prior will be for world titles. And incredibly, we love being here. We love seeing all the beautiful faces here. We'll be back with much more action here in Costa Mesa. It is time now for our next matchup, which will be in the women's strawweight division. First, out of the blue corner, training out of San Diego from the Barrett Submissions team, Marilyn Cruz. Abu representing Barrett Yoshida in San Diego, California. Yeah, very well-rounded athlete. So exciting to see what she she'll she'll put on today. Her opponent out of the red corner, training right here in Costa Mesa, California, with the art of jujitsu, Ashley Funegra. <laughs> Ashley Funegra makes her who's number one debut. Her sister, Mia Funegra. Competed in the last who's number one, had an amazing performance. Yeah, she looked great in that performance. I guess the big question is, do you think Ashley wants to put on an identical performance <laughs> as her sister did? <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this woman's straw weight, tail of the tape. Marilyn Cruz, 31 years old, five foot, weighed in at 115.2 pounds. Ashley Funegra, 17 years old, five foot one, weighed in at 114. Point two pounds. Yeah, her sister just had such nice movement. Match, we'll see. Yeah, amazing passing attempts. Just very, very well rounded. Marilyn actually has experience competing against Ashley's sister um, recently. As I say that, Ashley pulling guard right away, establishing top position, looking to pass. Yeah, early little leg entry to end up using it as a sweep. 
she left her arm back out there in Maryland's underhook. She just used the right arm over the top, most likely here. Will Magrin up? She's gonna stay on the front head, front head and arm. Now into a front headlock. Mounted with a guillotine here, an arm and guillotine. So it's tough to see right now. It's not under, quite under the chin. So it looks like she will let that go. There's a lot of movement going on. Yeah, she established that uh, mounted guillotine, yeah. but uh, Marilyn was looking really calm. Yeah, very calm. Sure. You're right about that. She wasn't really sweating that too much. And Back to the standing position. Ashley pulling once again. Switching leg attacks. Establishing top position. Yeah, beautiful use of the legs to come right to the top. Leg entries to the sweeping. I believe that is the best use of the legs, in my opinion. Um, submission, of course, is uh, ideal, but when you have two well-versed players using it it's, as a sweep, uh, is everyone should have that in their game. Maryland showing some great flexibility. Ashley trying to, a knee cut pass there. And looking like a little attack there on the foot. Now looking for the choke attack. Can't see for, you know, her hand is not in yeah. there. So she has almost like a north-south guillotine. It's almost at, it's not quite an up, sort of an upside down inverted rear naked, but was was close. Definitely a, a lot of different passing attempts that we saw from her sister. Her sister utilized a lot of like left, right, kind of uh, misdirectional passing. Um, whereas with Ashley, she's really diving with that knee cut. Yeah. Back, back. And now, guard recovery. A bit of a different pace than the, the last match. Yeah, it's more, more consistent, right? Smooth and consistent, um, but but productive nonetheless. So it was almost a nice little, there's a long, long drag there by Marilyn. Then. Actually attacking the foot there for a second. We're gonna have our first judge's favor in a sec. Judge's favor, red. No surprise there, Ashley dominating. Maryland's left that arm out again. And, and this is a pretty deep, was a pretty deep underhook. She's worked herself around looking for Kimura. Yep, she's got Kimura. Now does she want to do Kimura or an arm lock or a triangle? Want to or take the back if Maryland turns. Maryland's definitely not turning. She seems to have let it go. So. Ashley Finegra attacking. Just a dominant top position here. Maryland's really having a tough time of preventing those passes and recovering in, a, in an effective guard position. Ashley continues to threaten with that dart stroke on top. Yeah, she's going to pull the head down. She can knee cut through if she can't quite reach her hands, but she's starting to get her hands connected. Marilyn needs to turn to all fours to fight this off and get that elbow on the on the mat. It just wasn't quite there. Ashley Funegra continuing to dominate from the top position. Four minutes, 30 seconds left in this match. Once again, Ricardo nice, Andrelli nice. here with Mr. Sean Williams. We're live at the hangar, the OC Fairgrounds in Costa Mesa, California. Yeah, Marilyn got her arm stuck up there again. Is that sort of that, the arm that keeps getting underhooked? She's leaving it behind a little bit. Now her hand, I've, I believe her hand is stuck inside there, but this is still a lot of pressure. She, she mowed right through the half guard, mounted. I think her hand might be stuck there, which means uh, the Katakatami can be tough to submit if the hand there, th there's a good shot of there. You can see the hand. She can get another hand in the armpit to help. And it's, it's unbearably uncomfortable for the bottom person, but if you're flexible, 
it's hard to actually, well, now she's getting under the chin. She's actually pulled her, Marilyn has pulled the shoulder under the chin, so this is gonna get a little bit tighter. Now it's back up on the face. So it's uncomfortable for the bottom person. If you're flexible, it doesn't hurt your shoulder as much as she slipped out. Hard to finish Katagatami. Some, oftentimes you'll, you'll want to move up and to S mount or just reestablish a Katagatami or double underhooks again. Or even just use it to take the back. You can, other yeah. Positions. I mean, it's uncomfortable. You can, you can absolutely submit people that have inflexible shoulders there, but. Marilyn Cruz being coached by Mr. Bear Yoshida. Judges favor Rap Red. Legend. Ashley Fonegra has uh, Guilherme Mendez, Cole Abate, as well as her sister in her corner. There's that arm she left out there again. Now there's an arm lock, but. The one thing I notice is every time Ashley is spinning for that arm, Marilyn does a really good job of keeping her shoulders to the mat, uh, not exposing the arm attack. She's doing a really good job of defending that specific attack. Yeah. She's not really unable to, you know, reverse the situation, but she is defending that one attack, several armbar attacks from Ashley Fidegra. She's gonna go on a straight arm lock on, the, on the Udigatami on that far side. At least get ma she'll at least get mounted. If she can get her foot free, she'll have just a standard forward arm lock. She's moved herself into position, but the foot in the half guard can be problematic. Marilyn was able to get out. Actually forcing Marilyn to the half guard. And you know, when you talk about Barrett's submission academy, uh, and just Barrett Yoshida in general, you think of submissions, like Barrett was a master yeah. in the no-gi game especially, just establishing some very, very unorthodox submissions that no one's ever seen before. And, and then you look at uh, uh, Ashley Funegra coming out of AOJ right here in Costa Mesa, representing that kind of modern jiu-jitsu and the new evolution of AOJ's no-gi game. We're seeing it here in full effect. Heel hook attacks, several Darce attempts. Very good, just a great clash of styles here. Yeah, it looks like he was going to try a false read for a second. And again, that underhook on that top arm there. That arm that's hanging over the back. Yeah, Barrett, Barrett was a master. He had that two on one the open guard with Noki. He was almost like a collar, Noki collar sleeve, and he was a genius at it. Um, Moving into Kimura here. Oh, Marilyn attacking here. She's got a little bite on the heel. Not too deep, switching up grips on the leg. Can't really see from this position, but looks like Marilyn's got a little attack sequence beginning there. Ashley kind of withdrawing from the position. A bit of an uh, interesting grip there by Marilyn Cruz. I wonder if she's trying to use that to get up or she actually has some sort of submission attack. Yeah, she was going for the calf slicer, I believe, there. Um, it's going to be tough on, on the, you know, with the flexibility that he's going to so. oh, Very nice contest. Really nice and smooth. Yeah. Both young ladies, so. Let's take a look at the replay. Saw some front headlock. Strong guillotine attempts to mount there from Funegra, Marilyn doing her best to recover and defend. She had a nice head and arm attack. Was unable to get to the fish. And you talk about the armed uh, lock submissions that Funegra was kept attacking. Marilyn Cruz, you know? Cruz did a great job of just keep defending all of those, getting her shoulders to the mat. Last second leg attack in the match there by Cruz. But I don't think that's going to be enough to get the victory here. No, I don't think so. Go to a judge's decision here.
We have the judges' scores. We have your judges' scores. The winner in the red corner via decision, Ashley Funegra. Ashley Funegra wins in her Who's Number One debut. Dominant performance over Marilyn Cruz. That's a 1-0 for AOJ here at Costa Mesa. Let's kick it over to Kendall Rusing with a word for our winner. Ashley Funegra, congratulations on a big opening win here. Tell us what the fans should be thinking about when they see you and we got the purple braids. I know you guys talk a lot about that on social media. What do you want the fans to know when they're watching you out here fighting? Um, just that most, I'm always attacking, always trying to chase the submission and always trying to try and finish the fight as fast as I can. Um, and also me and my sister, we love to do the braids whenever we compete um, because we like to embrace more of our feminine side in jiu-jitsu. And it's really cool because we get to see a lot of like the little girls like doing the same and matching the same hairstyle with us. So it's really cool to be able to inspire them. And so for this competition, I decided to do pro braids and a pro rash guard because I'm a pro belt and it's my debut in Nogi as a pro belt. So that's why I chose the purple. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, you've had an incredible last year now coming in as a new Purple Belt. And your sister had a big opening win on Who's Number One on our last show. Can we expect to see more of both of you guys potentially? Uh, yes, actually, um, I thought it would be cool if uh, maybe one of the sooner cards, me and my sister, were on the card together. So I thought it would be cool to try and set that up. Absolutely. Is there anybody that you have in mind that you'd be looking to have a match with here on Who's Number One? I will obviously, you know, great to have your hometown crowd here able to watch you. But if we're somewhere else another time, who can they look to tune into? Um, I don't have anybody in particular, but any like black belt, either 110 or 115 would be great to try and set it up. All right, she wants to go from blue to purple to now competing with black belts right away. We love to see it. Let's give her one big round of applause here. Congrats to our champion. And tonight's event is sponsored by Swain Mats by Dollamore, the official mat of Flow Grappling. Swain hybrid mats utilize a revolutionary low-profile tatami vinyl to create the ultimate grappling surface. Experience the hybrid difference at dollamore.com. Don't go anywhere, guys. We will be back with a men's lightweight match. We got Max Hansen versus Daniel Sattler coming up shortly. Don't go anywhere, guys. We will return.
preliminary matchup is in the welterweight division. First, in the blue corner, training out of San Diego, California with Atos Jiu-Jitsu, Daniel Sattler. Daniel Sattler makes his Who's Number One debut. Andre Galvao told me about this guy about six months ago. He said, you gotta have my boy Daniel on Who's Number One, so we made it happen. Yeah, he's very dynamic. He, he will jump on submissions. He's good for, kind of from everywhere. It's, That's the but, rumor. He's just yeah, a submission yeah, machine. Yeah, he's... His opponent in the red corner, training out of Toledo, Ohio, with Adamas Jiu-Jitsu and Pedago submission, Max Hansen. Max Hansen, another Who's Next reality show alumni, makes his Who's Number One return in a match against Daniel Sattler, Max Hansen, teammate of Dante Leone, who will be defending his 155-pound title later on. Yeah, he, this guy, very good, Max. Good on the legs. These guys have fought before. It was very, very close with Sattler coming, coming out victorious. All right, let's take a look at this welterweight tail of the tape. Daniel Sattler, 23 years old, 5'9", weight, 170.4 pounds. Max Hansen, 25 years old, 5'10", weighing in at 169.2 pounds. Yeah, it'll be a very different clash of styles here. I think Hansen's just going to try to suck up on the legs and, and use those leg entries to score, like, essentially what would be scores. Like, there he's almost on inside. Whereas uh, Sattler, a uh, little bit more nice trying to, to get into that K-guard situation. But look at the, his knee, left his knee behind. There, he got it out. And uh, these guys actually had a match at the Nogi Worlds. I believe Daniel Sattler won either by points yeah. or decision. Yeah. And uh, Max is looking for that rematch. And he said, you know, in this format, he really feels that he should be able to come away victorious just because he has the ability to just flow and attack from, you know, bottom to top, top to bottom without worrying about getting points scored on. Yeah. That would be interesting because I, uh, they're sad. Oh, he's out there with the flying he drive. Well. He's dynamic with his submission hunt. He goes after it. And he's got a straight arm. He's, arm. Yep, he's extended that. See if he can get a better grip on the wrist. The legs are. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the legs are in the way. Uh, he actually got it. Daniel Sattler, the submission machine from Atos Jiu Jitsu, wins in impressive fashion, yeah. flying triangle to armbar. Wow. Yep. Yes, I, I, I told you he will just fly on submissions. He, and that's, the, that's how you, you've got to watch. He's a very dangerous human being here, just jumps right over the top. Hansen just got, you know, I, I don't think he got careless. He was grounded. He it was up on a high knee. He reached out there to a collar tie and then just got his arms stuck in there. Yeah, that was exactly what Calvin was telling us. Yeah. He said that, you know, Sattler is just a submission machine, goes after it from start to finish, and he did just that. It was interesting. He, he hit that triangle. He had the arm straight. The arm was kind of turned a bit. Yeah. And you know, some people, if they're in that situation, they might let go, try to readjust the position. But Sattler did not let go, and he just no. kept on attacking. Your winner out of the blue corner via armbar submission, Daniel Sattler. Daniel Sattler gets the win impressively in his Who's Number One debut. What a way to make a debut. Yeah, yeah, spectacular submission there. Flying triangle to our bar, wow. Let's kick it over to Kendall for a word with our winner. Daniel Sattler, what a lightning fast submission here. What was going through your mind as you jumped into that triangle? Yeah, uh, I was actually training that a lot, you know. Uh, in this super fight, I, it was a great opportunity for me to study my opponent a lot because I knew it was going to be only one match and one fight so it was all focused on him and I had like that move that I, I drew that every day you know the arm bar from different scenarios and yeah I, I watched him at the uh, who's next so that that was a lot of 
content for me to study. <laughs> well, and not only the content, but you guys had a recent match where you came out victorious in a slight points victory. So were you looking to make a different statement here tonight after that? Yeah, for sure. Like I said yesterday, you know, I know a lot of athletes, they say, oh, you know, I want to submit, the go with the submission, you know, but they, I know most of, most of them just say to say, you know, but my, my coaches, everybody know that I really go for the submission, you know, and when I put my word, my word's 100%, and I said yesterday in the press conference that that match would end up in submission, and I made my word, so yeah. So that's what the fans should be hoping for if we see you back here, right? That's what you want them to know, you're a submission machine? Always, always. That's my, my style. That's my game. You know, uh, the soccer player wants to score the goal. You know, the basketball player, you know, and the jiu-jitsu guy is not different. It's the submission, and that's what the event brought me, even brought me here, too. Amazing. Let's give him one more round of applause. Congratulations on a submission victory tonight. I want to send a abraço to all the people from Brazil, all my family here. Está me assistindo. Estamos é, aí. Toda honra e glória seja dada a Deus. E é por vocês que eu luto. Ouça! Daniel Sadler, congratulations. All right, this event is sponsored by King's Kimonos. King's is a world leader in jiu jitsu gear and apparel. Premium crafted products worn by the sport's biggest names. King's Kimonos reign supreme. All right, in our final prelim match, we will have Elijah Dorsey versus Ivan Herrera. Coming up next, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Our final preliminary match is in the welterweight division. First, in the blue corner, training out of Camp Springs, Maryland, with Team Lloyd Irvin, Elijah Dorsey. Elijah Dorsey making his Who's Number One debut, recent winner of the ADCC East Coast Trials. Yeah, when what a performance that was yeah i mean come kind of come out of nowhere for and it's just beat everyone and then yeah. and then do some great things after that as well it's crazy <laughs> these guys on a roll his opponent in the red corner training out of san diego california oh. with barrett submissions ivan herrera ivan herrera Representing Barrett Submission, San Diego, California, makes his Who's Number One debut. They say he's a scrapper, had some, a lot of MMA experience, looking to make a name for himself here at Who's Number One. And what a way if he could defeat Elijah Dorsey. Let's take a look at this welterweight tail of the tape. Ivan Herrera, 25 years old, five foot nine, weighed at 168.4 pounds. Elijah Dorsey, 22 years old, six foot, 168.6 pounds. <laughs> All right, Elijah Dorsey, in the green camo. Yeah. Ivan Herrera, black and gray. Dorsey's uh, ADCC East Coast Trials run and recently European Championships yeah. gold medalist. Yeah. So he's good gi, no gi, 
Yes. Jumps guard. Yeah. Yeah. Down home that. single. Ivan Herrera went into the matrix there for a second. Yeah. He floated in midair. And look at the submission chain attack here by Elijah Dorsey. Man, this yeah. match is going good. Yep, from, from arm to leg. He's just ahead. Right now, he's a step ahead. Now he's got a yeah, he left his leg hanging out there a little bit, so. A lot of buzz about Elijah Dorsey. It, it was actually a last minute. You know, we were able to slot him in last minute. We had some uh, matches that we were looking to do with Elijah. It didn't pan out properly, but uh, we were able to get him at least on the undercard. A lot of people were going crazy about that, but this is where you make your name, you know? Yeah, you, yeah. You win on the undercard, you get into the main card of who's number one, and everyone wants to see what Elijah Doris is going to do this year and beyond. Actually has a win over Nicky Ryan at the Yeah, East, that's right, that's right. Yeah, he's going to the finals. So he's got some big wins under his cap and a who's number one victory could change this young man's life but ivan herrera is here to scrap and he is no slouch defending all of elijah's attacks so far yeah elijah's um wrestling abilities are look very very good at the moment some really nice takedowns and you know, we, we try to not let these guys do competitions before their who's number one matches. Elijah snuck in the European <laughs> Championship. He only snuck in the European <laughs> Championships and won. It didn't get hurt, so you know that was acceptable. Him and Mika Galvao, but uh, <laughs> shot there by beautiful spin there gets Ivan down to the mat right away. So he moves here to the mount. Just also have to do slide that right knee through. Very, very good position here with that near side underhook. You just keep keep his head driving up. He should mount fairly easily. Evans come up on his side now. Which... I was gonna say it looks like Elijah's got the head and arm trapped there, but using it to get to the back position. Yeah, when you put, bring the head around the behind, that's a back take uh, is what you're looking for there. When you have that pressure passing, but your head. So it trails behind your opponent. Trying to yank this arm up and behind the heads. One thing you have to really be careful defending the back like this. There he tapped him. So, so that back, <laughs> Hensel used to tell us eons ago, let's not defend the back like that because it's not a very good back control. <laughs> so you that's defend, why. So you're that's defending why. the choke with that's your right. arm above your this head. Is a very common, this is very common uh, when people bring the hand bicep to ear to defend the back control and this is what can happen he, he stuck his arm behind the back and um well un injured the shoulder but i'm not sure what we're yeah unorthodox submission win yeah, by we're... elijah dorsey a lot of people in the audience are just like wait what just happened there yeah that's a that's a real submission i mean if you put your bicep by your ear and and don't not sort of have an awareness that your arm can get yanked behind your head. Yeah. And if you get stuck, it's going to go right on the shoulder. Here it is. So he, he chose to put the arm up beside, behind by his head. It's very common defense. Yeah. They're, they're just hanging out up there, there, like that. And then now there he's got it pulled behind, and it's just he got stuck. He got stuck and then pulled, yanked, and the shoulder popped. Doubled up on it, yeah. pulled it above his yeah. head. It's not the wow. most controlling submission, but like you get stuck there just wrong, and boy, oh boy, this is what can happen. Well, Elijah Dorsey said we can expect an exciting match, and that it was. We have an official decision via submission. Your winner out of the blue corner, Elijah Dorsey. Elijah Dorsey representing Team Lloyd Irvin wins by submission. Impressive submission win here at who's number one in his debut looking forward to seeing this young man on the main card of an upcoming who's number one let's kick it over to kendall for a word with our winner elijah dorsey with a big submission here i gotta ask what everyone's wondering do you have a name for that what are we calling that walk us through what happened there at the end uh so when they're controlling one of my hands uh, and their elbows up then shoulder lock i mean there's no, no special name for it, just a shoulder lock. You can call it a big breakfast lock if you want, but, you know, patent pending. It's like, nah, but, uh, 
Yeah, that's, that's been working on that shoulder lock a lot. Uh, it's my second time hitting that competition. And I'm, ha I'm happy to do it on this big stage. You may need that patent pending then after doing it here on Who's Number One. So, man, you've had a big year, big couple of months. You have ADCC trials win, Europeans randomly off in the gi, and now back here in Ogi, Who's Number One. What does it mean to add that to your resume after a great couple of months? Um, it's just a part of the process, uh, my, my growing process. Uh, I'm just working my way to the top. These, these uh, titles that I'm getting as I go to the top is awesome, but I'm always trying to get the, the championship title, the, the world title, the who's number one title, all, all of the above. So, yeah, it's just a, a working process for that. So would you say on your mind now or the ADCC championship, like you mentioned, who's number one title? Is there anything else that you're itching to get or those are the main things that you're thinking about? Talk to us a little bit about your plans for the next few months. Uh, next few months, uh, Pan's coming up in the Gi. So we'll be back in the Gi, competing in the Gi. Maybe Brasileros. Uh, and then definitely world championships. And then in August, that's a big show in, in, in the T-Mobile arena. So I'm excited for that. Well, we're really excited to hear you staying busy. We love to watch you. Let's give him one more big round of applause, guys. Congratulations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the free stream here on Float Grappling. If you're watching online on YouTube or social media, that's the end of the free stream. So the only way to watch the rest of the card, an amazing card it is, I got to say, uh, the only way to watch is to go to flowgrappling.com, get your subscription. How could you not be a Flow Grappling subscriber at this point? Yeah, you got to do it. Yeah, guys, go get your Flow Grappling subscription. Go to flowgrappling.com to watch the rest of the card. Ugo versus Nicky Rod in the main event. We got Mika Galvao, we got Dante versus Pato. Go to flowgrappling.com, subscribe. We'll see you in a minute. And this event is sponsored by Kicksite Kick BJJ Software, rated number one by thousands of athletes and owners worldwide. For nearly 20 years, Kicksite has helped Jiu-Jitsu Academies make their business better with billing management and website design services. Visit kicksite.com for a free 30-day trial. We'll be right back with Sebastian Rodriguez versus Jacob Couch coming up in about three minutes after these commercials. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thank you. 